So, hi, and I'm very glad to be here with all of you today, although I will say it's a little intimidating uh, being in a room with everybody discussing, uh, without me being here, the work I did. So, uh, and I know you do it every day. So I, I come at this from a very respectful uh, position. Uh, I am honored to be in the room with you, and I hope that we have a really productive dialogue. Uh, so my background, I, I was a hospice social worker. Uh, I, was a, I was in the serving United States military. I was a combat medic. Uh, I had been in and around hospitals my entire life. Uh, I was a hospice social worker. I sat with way too many people as they died, and probably uh, in every decade of my life, so as a professional, I did that. Uh, in every decade of my life, I have lost at least one very significant person to me. Uh, I, and I did hands-on care for them until they, and, and, and was at the bedside with every one of them. Uh, my grandmother, my godmother, uh, then my mother, then my father, uh, and then two and a half years ago, my sister-in-law, uh, who, who died of incredibly aggressive cancer and left me a five-year-old, who is now down uh, seven and a half uh, ice skating in Union Square while I'm here with you. Um, I did my PhD in Oregon at Portland State when uh, the end of life legislation was going into effect then. And I did my uh, doctoral internship at uh, Oregon, Oregon Science University in the end of life decision making uh, division. Uh, and I did my dissertation on the uh, intersection of end of life and Mexican American culture. I'm, I'm a Mexican American, uh, I'm an LCSW, a PhD, and now I find myself to be a legislator. I don't know how all those things happened, but they did. Um, so I have worked in and around vulnerable populations my entire life. That has been my life's work. And while I know this law, as we've studied the research, as I've looked at it, I know it generally, people who use it come from a very small privileged population. But I will say, and I, I have passed some fairly major legislation, so in my third year in the legislature, but I, I did a billion dollar bill this year that brings uh, solar, uh, to, the, to, to low income people. Never been able to crack that nut about how do you actually use solar and bring the green economy down to everybody. But this bill has had people I don't know who have come up to me on the streets everywhere to say, thank you. Thank you for giving me a choice. And while I think very few people will use this, I think there's a larger amount of people that because it exists, they feel a sense of relief. Uh, and, and anybody who's worked in and around end of life know that when people are dying, whether they're gonna use something or not, and I don't think anybody that, that I have loved and cared for uh, related to me would have used this. I don't think so. We're, we're Catholic, also, I'm also a Catholic. Um, I, before we introduced this, I reached out to my bishop and I said I was gonna do this. He brought in five people. We had a, you know, a two hour conversation about it. Um, I just got my daughter baptized last week in the Catholic Church. I'm a practicing Catholic, and, and, and I find um, that while the, while the bishop you know, really worked with me, that there is, is beauty in pain and meaning making and suffering, and I get that, but I don't think everybody has that same desire. And again, the knowledge that it exists for many people is, I think, what, what makes sense. Uh, well, we were talking a lot about, you know, the Latino community and Catholics and how they didn't want this. My 80-year-old relatives were, you know, Mia, what happened? What happened to the bill? Why did it die? Like, it was the Catholics. Well, you know, I'm glad they're not my kids, right? I'm glad they're not my kids. Um, and we're, you know, very happy when it passed. I have not had one, and I have a lot of relatives, I have not one person say, how could you do this, right? Um, so. Well, there's a lot of noise about who's for it and who's against it. Again, I do believe it's, it's an individual choice that people need to make on their own and just knowing that they have it. Uh, because everybody has that story that we talked about, right? Everybody has that narrative. Uh, and when we were coming up on this bill, I can't tell you the amount of tearful conversations I had in public and in private with other assembly members. Um, and somebody asked me, why do you think uh, it's because the, the you know people who were testifying, who were actively dying, who were testifying about it and wanting it, uh, had a bit different experience than those who had it. Something happened in the past. And I said because they are talking about their story that was already written, their mom or dad that died, and that story that was already written that they can't undo. That movie that somebody was talking about, right? 
people who were in the face, who, who were coming out and advocating every day, I mean, wheelchairing themselves into hearings, they were writing their stories in the moment, right? And they wanted to be able to be the director of how it concluded. In my, in my closing remarks, and, and I talked about this, this uh, one woman who came repeatedly, and, and she will not be able to use this option. And I'm, I'm sad for that because it was her, she was a single parent, an attorney, uh, conservative, Republican, Christian, all of those things who people said were against it, and said, I have raised my daughter by myself. I have taught her to stand up for things. I have convicted people who have committed crimes. I am not committing a crime, and my last gift to her is for her to see me die in a peaceful way with her sitting at my bedside. That's my gift I want to leave my 21-year-old daughter. And who am I or anybody else to tell her, sorry, you can't have that, uh, in, a, in a legal way. She's a DA in a legal way. Uh, so I did a very small bill last year, uh, call, uh, AB uh, 2139, which simply said, cause, because I have done, done the research, been in the research, written about this, we don't die well in the US. We are a death-denying culture. We don't die very well. I got my three minute going on. Okay, we don't die very well, so how do we do it better and how do we increase the conversation? Because we don't want to talk about it. Um, so I did a bill last year called 20, uh, AB 20, 2139, which just said, if you have a terminal diagnosis from which no cure is expected, the physician, upon making that diagnosis or at a follow-up time, must say, you have the right to comprehensive counseling about end-of-life options. Yet I thought I was trying to gun people down. The pushback I got, the arguments I got about how that was so wrong astounded me. But we were successful. We got that passed. Uh, so, and hopefully that... that helps the process. When uh, uh, Brittany Maynard went to Oregon and did that, there was a, a big push. And I, in my heart, would w wanted to do the bill that we passed last year. I thought maybe in 10 years, we would be ready for the bill. When Brittany Maynard uh, went to Oregon, Senators Wolk and Lonnie came to me and said, we think the time is right. We, we're going to do it. And I'm like, ooh, I don't, you know, uh, PPI. Every poll says we're, we're ready. I'm like, well, every poll does not serve in the state assembly. Uh, in my house, where we throw a lot of very heavy punches and elbows and drink beer and, and you know, I mean, it is, we are the raucous house uh, and very swayed by interest groups. And so there's a lot of entrenchment on ideas about things. So I didn't think we could get it through my house. And sure, sure enough, we got it all the way through the Senate. It got to my house and we hit a brick wall. Um, because we introduced a special session of, for healthcare and trying to uh, uh, address issues around uh, uh, the MOC tax for Medi-Cal, um, it was broadly defined and there was a different compos composition of uh, the Assembly Healthcare Committee, uh, which, which I already knew that we were able to get the votes we needed to pass it through there. And once we passed it through there, we were able to get it to the floor. And after uh, two and a half hours of very intense, very tearful, if you haven't watched the tape, it's available, debate, uh, we were able to pass the bill at the end. The governor, I'm sure you've read his response, was, I think, very thoughtful. Um, and he uh, very rarely writes something, but very thoughtful and said, I don't know what I would want, but I might, and I don't want to stop other people who might want to explore this option. That's how it came into law. Um, and because we're in a st special session, it still has not been implemented. It will have to be uh, 90 days after the close of special session. So we don't go back into session until January. And then we'll see what we can do uh, to be able to uh, close it at that time, to be able to uh, allow for implementation. Um, I, we took a lot of amendments, and I'll talk about them. You can ask me questions. I think there's more safeguards in this bill than any other bill. Um, we got the CMA to go neutral on that, and partly because I think people knew it was going to end up on the ballot. And when things end up on the ballot, I believe as legislators, we have abdicated our responsibility to pass good legislation with safeguards built in. Um, I feel like we did that by and talking with every interest groups. Um, I, I also committed, as a part of the process, to do uh, an annual uh, review of this. So uh, the speaker's already uh, approved me to have a special session on end-of-life care. Um, once we start collecting the data from uh, the pu public health, we will do an annual review. If adjustments need to be made, we will do that. Um, so I'm sure everybody in the, group, in the room does not agree with it, but we have the law now, and I think it behooves us all to be able to... And, and, I'll, and also say, uh, Senators Wilk and Monty, they don't come at it from the same perspective I do. They've had bad experiences or, or feel a uh, social justice issue around it. I agree with that, but my bigger goal 
is that we have more of these conversations. And I think this law, as people have already talked about, will facilitate people being able to have conversations about what they want at end of life. Be, use more palliative care, use more hospice care. Um, and that's, that is my, my goal, is to just help us as a society move towards being able to die better in however that looks for you.